Which of the following statements is correct? Okay, question 11. Which of the following statements is correct for ketones? Okay, so you should know that primary alcohols go to aldehydes and then they can go to carboxylic acids or alkanoic acids, if depending on if we're, which group we're going through, but if we're being very general, aldehydes and carboxylic acids. Secondary alcohols can go to ketones. The can go is oxidations. And then after that, we're not going anywhere. And tertiaries just refuse to go anywhere in the first place. Okay, so we are looking for which is correct for ketones. Here's our ketones, okay. Uh, they are formed by oxidation of tertiary alcohols. Definitely not, okay. They contain the group C double bond O bond H. Well, that is a carbonyl group, which is what we need to have in both the aldehydes and the ketones. However, ketones are in the middle somewhere. So we've got a carbon and carbon on either side. For aldehydes, it's at the end. So that is actually an aldehyde group, so no. They contain a carboxyl group, no. That's a carbonyl with the C double bond O and carboxyl would be a combination of hydroxyl and carbonyl, giving you carboxyl, um, and that's in the carboxylic acid, so not that one. Uh, they will not react with Felling's range solution. That's true because we cannot go any further once we have got as far as a ketone, so D. Okay, Carvone is a natural product that can be extracted from orange peel. Which line in the table correctly describes the reaction of carbone with bromine solution and with acidified potassium dichromate solution? We're pretty much doing the same question. So we've got to find what we have here. And what we have, if we look up here, we've got a C double bond O in the middle of a chain. So we've got another ketone. Okay, so given what we just said, okay, ketones are not going to react with acidified potassium dichromate solution. So no reaction and no reaction. This is wrong and this one's wrong. And bromine solution is looking for any form of unsaturation. Well, here we go. We've got a double bond in here. We've also got one up here, but this is the one that's going to go. Um, so decolorizes. So D. Okay, for question 12, the structure of isoprene is. Now, I'm sorry, you just need to memorize this. Okay, this is what isoprene is. So 2 methyl, 1, 3. Butadiene. And then you need to find that. So we need a four carbon with a double bond off number one and number three, and then we need a methyl group off number two. So that's what we have with. Oh, yes, sorry. For a second there, I thought I'd circled the wrong one. Okay, the rest do not follow that at all. Okay, the antibiotic erythromycin has the following structure. To remove its bitter taste, the erythromycin is reacted to give the compound with the structure shown below, which looks super complicated, but don't panic. Okay, which of the following types of compound has been reacted with erythromycin to produce this compound? Right, so let's look at what we have and what we've changed it to. So all of this section here, all of this is the same as the one up here. Okay, so what we've done is we've brought in this section. So the question is, nothing to do with the whole thing, just how did we get that link? Okay, this is a C double bond O bond O. So what we've done is we've created an ester link um, off the alcohol that was over here. So we reacted it with a carboxylic acid. And that's your answer. Okay, question 15, which the following is an isomer of 2,2-dimethylpentan-1-ol. Right, I would just straight off draw it, okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, we've got an OH of 1. I'm going to put this at the end because they've got all the ols at the end just to make my life slightly easier. And I've got a methyl group of... Oh, sorry. A methyl group of number 2, which is not there. Methyl group of number 2 is here, 1, 2. Um, so we've got a methyl here, 2,2-dimethylpentan-1-ol, okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yes, just checking, okay. Right, so here we have 5, 6, 6, so we've got a C7, okay, um, and one oxygen, um, or just an OH at the end. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 
Okay, so that's my formula. So I'm looking for something which is the same structural but different, sorry, same molecular but different structural formula for this. So for a start, let's look for seven carbons, because if it doesn't have seven carbons, I'm going to get rid of it straight away. So A has one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. That cannot possibly be an isomer of it. B has one, two, three, four, five. Oh no, let's, sorry, let's count this carefully. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It, it, it's potentially okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nope. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So even just by doing that, just to show what that looks like, okay, we've got a CH3, three, so we've got a carbon with C three CH3s, which is actually really dodgy um, nomenclature on that one. And then we've got a carbon with a hydrogen and another CH3. And then we've got a CH2 and an OH. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the OH. Fill in our hydrogens if it makes us feel better about it. Definitely the answer. Okay, we've got a Hess's Law question. Considering the reaction path shown below, okay, uh, according to Hess's Law, the delta H value in kilojoules per mole for reaction Z to Y. Okay, so I need to get from Z to Y, but I can't go this way, so I have to go round the other way. So I'm going to have to go this way, and then this way, and then this way. I've not got any multipliers. It could be a lot worse as far as a Hess question is concerned. So I'm going to go, just to call it nice ones that I can work with, this is A, B, C. Okay, I am going to go for my delta H. I'm going to go minus A. I'm with B, so it's okay, plus B. And I'm with C, so plus C. So that's going to be plus 210, minus 50, minus 86. Plug all that in. Okay. Now let's see if I can actually get this to fit on the page. I was struggling with this earlier. Just, oh, not quite. There we go. Right, okay. Right, so this is another energy diagram we are trying to get from I2 solid plus two electrons to two I minus. Okay, so what we've got in our data equations up the top here. We've got I2 solid, so that's fair enough, and that's going the way I would expect it to. We've got our I2 gas going to 2I, which is also fine. Um, and then I've got my I gas going to I minus this. This is not okay. I'm going to have to double this one up, okay, because I've got two I's, as I would assume most people have. Um, statistically, we are aware of this, that actually you have more eyes than the normal, sorry, than the average person. Um, right, so this one is going to be minus 698, okay? Um, so then you just fill it in, okay? So we're going to go up by 60, up by um, two, 243, and then down by minus 698. So correct answer is D. Okay. Which of the following statements regarding a chemical reaction at equilibrium is always correct? So this is your equilibrium statement, common equilibrium statement. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we, we have two definitions here. It is when the rates are constant for forward and back, or when your concentrations... remain unchanged. Doesn't mean they are equal. So this one is equal. The rate const rates are constant. That's an equal. Okay, this is not. The concentrations remain unchanged it means you might end up with higher or lower on either side. Okay, uh, so which of them is always correct? The rates of the forward and reverse reactions are equal. That is true. Concentrations, not necessarily. Forward and reverse have stopped would not be true and addition of a catalyst changes the position. Not true, you just get there faster. Okay, potential energy diagram, activation energy for the forward reaction. What are we looking at? So the activation energy is from here to here. So we've got X and Y, and this is going up the way. So X minus Y 
will give us the correct answer for that one. Okay, last multiple choice on the paper. Which of the following will react with bromine but not with iodine? Okay, this is this is the right thumb rule. Okay, so your right thumb, which you're going to put on everything on the right hand side, and then your left thumb is going to go on the left hand side. So let's start with bromine, okay? Here is we'll react with bromine but not with iodine. So here's bromine, okay? The right thumb rule says anything which is higher. So if your right thumb is higher than your left thumb, then it will work, okay? If it isn't, it won't. So hydroxide, you're like, that's there. So that's higher, it'll work. Here's our SO, SO3 2 minus, that'll work. Fe2 plus will work. Mn2, that won't work. Okay, so this one won't react with bromine. So we can take that one out of the equation straight away. Okay, right. So which of the following will react with bromine but not with iodine? So let's put in iodine this time. So iodine is up here. So which of the ones will react with bromine but not with iodine? There we go. And that's your multiple choice for that year.